All right, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the Two Stroke Turbo Channel. Stella here is very tired and relaxed. Waking up, getting to the shop in the morning, getting some scratches, getting a belly rub, and enjoying the warm summer weather. Today is the second day of summer. It's going to be 90 degrees again. And we're working on old cars. As you can see, they're all around us. Stella's going to take a break. I'm going to keep narrating. We are working on roadsters today, specifically this particular roadster. No, it is not a Volkswagen bug converted kit car. It is a real MGTD from 1951. If you've been following along on the videos, you'll notice we took it for a nice drive yesterday. It was very nice, but I found some things I wanted to fix on the car. Uh, three things, the battery, is not up to snuff, it's old, and I'm gonna show you what's going on. The shocks and the exhaust system. So this car, when I originally restored it four or five years ago for the family friends that I'm working on it for, I put in a Honda Civic battery. It was this battery right here, which at the time was a good battery. Uh, what is it? 450 cold cranking amps at zero degrees. Um, it fit the space good. But the terminal locations, when I had it in the car, it was like this. And the terminals were very close to the metal toolbox and firewall. So I actually glued in a piece of wood to keep it insulated. Not the correct thing, but I didn't know what else to do. It was the only battery that really fit. So since then, I've wised up. I took out the wood spacer. Uh, the wood spacer was right here. And I got one of these Optima batteries. It's a universal Optima. It has 910 cold cranking amps, so we're 200, no, double, almost double in the cold cranking amps department. Um, it is not a lead acid battery. It is a gel cell, so it should last longer. Um, there's caps, protective caps on both the positive and the negative side terminals, so I'm not worried about that shorting out on the firewall. And the placement of the top terminals are a good couple inches away. So there's a safety feature here. It's an upgraded uh, performance battery. In other words, it has twice the amount of cold cranking power. I had to relocate the bracket to a different hole to accommodate the bigger battery, but it fits in the box just fine. I think that's a worthwhile investment, and it's red. It matches the car. It's non-spillable, so if the car gets into an accident, acid won't leak out, which we hope that doesn't happen. Um, this car is 12-volt positive ground, and I marked that on the battery for Anybody who decides to jump start it, I don't know when I'll see this car again, probably be in a few years, uh, but that is a worthwhile upgrade. The next thing to do, I'm going to show you, is uh, we're going to get this car up in the air and we're going to see if we can add oil to the shocks. One of you commenters was like, Why don't you just add some oil to the shocks? And I'm like, That's a great idea. I didn't even think about that. So the shocks are super. Look at this. Oh, super bouncy. Hood just kind of fell down there. I got very excited. I mean, they're just ridiculous. This car is uh, very, very bouncy. So I'm gonna see if I can add some oil to the shocks. It has lever arm shocks, which are down on the chassis. Let's get up on the lift and take a look. And then the other last thing is the customer's complaint about inhaling exhaust. You can see the tailpipe comes out right here. Uh, underneath this cowling. So I think sometimes the exhaust can actually curl up or puddle up underneath here and get caught. I'm gonna extend this out beyond the bumper with a little chrome tip, and I think that might help a little bit. So another good, very worthwhile investment to enjoy our little car, but we gotta get these shocks working better. They're just, uh, back one's not so bad, but the front ones, oh my goodness, they are just, I mean, look at this. <laughs> we gotta work. Let's see if we can fix that. Has decided she's gonna help me or, or not. Stella, where'd you go? She's walking off. So we're putting oil in our shocks. So this is the Armstrong lever arm shock connected to the upper part of the trunnion of the car. You can see I've got the wheel turned and I've got the plug out the top and I'm adding a little bit of oil 
It's going down very slowly. I'm not sure if this is the correct way. I think there's an air bleed someplace. Um, when I pulled the plug out, I get a mirror in there and there was no oil at all in the reservoir. And I'm using 530 synthetic. I think it's supposed to take straight 30. I'm gonna try this. I can always drain it out, I suppose. But I can see in my clear little funnel there that it's not taking any more. So I'm gonna have to keep playing with this. See if I can fill these shocks up. Hopefully they'll come back. Okay, I think I sort of got this figured out. I'm trying to add, turn the light on here. There we go. Oil to my shocks. I've got the little funnel up there. You can see it's half full of oil. And what I've been doing is filling that completely. I loosened this plug on the bottom here to let a little air out. And then I bounce the car with just pushing on the bumper. And you can watch the air bubbles come up through the funnel. I'll show you as I bounce the car. And the level goes lower and lower. So it's actually ingesting some oil. I knew there was an air blockage in there somehow. So I think I've got this figured out without removing the shocks from the car. I'm hoping this works. It seems like this side's getting better. Um, but I guess we'll know when we get the other side done too. So I'm going to keep doing that. I keep filling that little funnel and watching the level. It's about the second tier now. See it? And just keep bouncing the car. Until it goes down. Tedious. Okay, I really thought this shock was dry. But adding oil to this shock? Oh my gosh. It just keeps taking it and taking it. I think I put, I just put that little funnel up there and it just keeps draining into the shock. I have loosened this bolt right here to let a little air out and I keep bouncing the car with my leg and it just keeps sucking it in. So I'm gonna keep pouring it in. Okay, while I have the IVs draining oil into my shocks, that one's gone down quite a bit. Check this side over here. That one hasn't gone down quite as much. This shock took a ton of oil. And then on the back side, I got my welder warmed up and I extended the exhaust out beyond the bumper. The exhaust did end right about, oh, right about here. And I was afraid the exhaust was coming into the car. Customers complaining of an exhaust smell. So that's still hot, still smoking. We have a, a little chrome exhaust extension. I hope it doesn't rub on the ground. I didn't want to hit the bumper, but it's got to get beyond the overrider there. I think that's going to do it. So, I don't know. The next thing to do, I think, is to take this for another drive. Let's get it down and see how those shocks work. Take it for a drive. Okay, so we got the MG shocks all pumped up full of oil. They took quite a bit of oil, actually. This one, when you bounce the car up and down, it has a lot of air bubbles. That one on this side, not so much. Let's do a test. Let's see. Let's see if our good work pays off. I don't think it did a hill of beans. I think those shocks are bad.